I think that it's very important to try your very best to regain all of your knee range of motion by six weeks following knee replacement surgery. And the reason for this is that there's a healing process that begins at the time of surgery. And as time progresses, scar tissue is formed and that scar tissue becomes more robust over time. This means that by six weeks after surgery, it's very difficult to regain more range of motion. So what happens if you get six weeks after surgery and you still don't have a full range of motion? Well, first of all, how do we define what good range of motion is? Well, we really want your knee to be capable of all reasonable desired activities. And typically, if you can go from full extension to 120 degrees of flexion, that should be sufficient for just about every activity. If you can get more than 120 degrees of range of motion, that's even better. But a 120 degree arc of range of motion is what I would really aim for. So what happens if six weeks go by and you're still not there? Well, one option is to just accept it. And it is possible to regain another five or 10 degrees just spontaneously over the next year or so. And that may be reasonable. It may be that you're not super active and 120 degrees of range of motion is simply not that important. I've had plenty of patients that get 110 or 115 degrees and they're perfectly happy with that. But let's just say that you're only 90 degrees and you're at six weeks from surgery. That in my opinion is not acceptable. And if you're my patient, I would offer you a manipulation under anesthesia. So what is manipulation under anesthesia? Well, we bring you to the hospital and the anesthesiologist can give you some sedation. And the way I think about this is really physical therapy under anesthesia. And most of the time when patients struggle with range of motion, they struggle because their muscles get tense in response to pain, stress, or anxiety. And it's very difficult to relax sometimes. And so by administering IV anesthesia, this allows the muscles to be completely relaxed. And during this procedure, you won't feel anything and you won't remember anything. But what we're aiming to do here is push the knee through a range of motion while you can't feel and you can't resist. And that allows the scar tissue to be broken up. It doesn't magically rehabilitate your knee. What it does is break down that scar tissue that's been allowed to form and it, it breaks through that so that hopefully now you'll be able to make some more progress for at least a few more weeks. Ideally, within a few weeks of a manipulation procedure, you'll have a 120 degree arc of range of motion and you just need to maintain that as you continue to heal up. In the time period following manipulation under anesthesia, I would strongly encourage you to be very generous with the use of ice, anti-inflammatory medications if you can tolerate them, and long duration stretching as often as you can for as long as you can. Now is really our time to regain range of motion. Let's just say that at six weeks you decided that you did not want to undergo manipulation. Well, at that point you might still regain a little bit of range of motion over the next year or so. I would suggest this is not as predictable and if you haven't really met our goals, I would steer you toward manipulation because I think that it's low risk and high reward potentially. However, let's say you didn't do that and you regret that at some point. Once you get past about eight weeks from the initial surgery, manipulation under anesthesia is, in my opinion, inappropriate. And this is because the scar tissue has gotten dense to the point where it's unlikely to release with gentle pressure, even under anesthesia. I would be concerned about creating more damage, for example, a fracture or rupture of the extension mechanism. And so if you decided later on that you wanted more range of motion, at that point, this would require a procedure called arthroscopic lysis of adhesions, followed then by a manipulation. And what we do there basically is a surgical procedure that involves two little poke holes into the knee. We release the tight scar tissue using shaving instruments or sometimes a electrocautery cutting tool and that breaks through the scar tissue and allows us then to disrupt the scar tissue with a manipulation safely. At that point, again, we have a few weeks following the procedure to maintain this range of motion and hopefully restore your knee function to something that's gonna be acceptable long-term. Let's say you go through all this stuff and you're still struggling with range of motion. There's always a salvage procedure and it is possible to do a full revision knee replacement 
where we take everything out, rebalance the soft tissues again, and then restart the whole rehabilitative process. This is obviously something we'd like to avoid. With each of these steps, as I've described, there's increasing risk. The lowest risk is just rehabilitate once after surgery and get a good result. The second step would be a manipulation under anesthesia, and that's relatively low risk, but obviously it's more involved than simply rehabilitating ideally the first time. Arthroscopic lysis of adhesions, because it involves a surgical procedure and breaking the skin, obviously subjects you to higher risk of infection. Full revision surgery is the highest risk procedure and something we'd like to avoid. Hopefully this algorithm that I've outlined is helpful to you in understanding how we manage a stiff knee following surgery. Again, number one, we would encourage you to simply rehabilitate, get all your range of motion back by six weeks. If you're unable to do this by six weeks, then a manipulation under anesthesia would be a reasonable thing to consider. If you choose not to do this, or if you choose to do this and it is still not successful, unfortunately, we can't just then manipulate your knee. We would need to perform what's called arthroscopic lysis of adhesions. And although that does entail additional surgical risk, it is a reasonable thing to undergo so that you get a good functional range of motion out of your knee. And as a worst case scenario, essentially at any point in the future, if your knee fails to meet your needs, a full revision surgery is something to consider. I hope discussing my algorithm on how to manage a stiff total knee replacement has been helpful and interesting for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to write a comment below and I'll give you the best answer I can.